here. I'm here in live and in color. Here at alive. Live. Yeah, and look, here David. Do you? Yeah, I'm here. Ah, yes. Well, it's it's the last group of the day. You get special stuff. Hey, hey, how are you, Dave? All right, so unfortunately, you guys have me as your tour guide. My name is Ken. I work in, in marketing communications at Jersey Jack Pinball. Um, and we have Jen. Where is Jen? Jersey Jen. Where is she? Over here. Oh, there's Jersey Jen. Jersey Perfect. Jen. Thank you. She's here, too. And Jersey Jack. So it just got interesting between the, uh, That's a super the founders group. and the founders of the company. And so, uh, just to touch base again, if you don't mind... Please refrain from touching anything so you don't get a finger caught or zapped. No uh, number two, you can take pictures throughout the facility. We just ask that you know and take, uh, you know, focus pictures on any individual employee for their personal uh, safety. Okay? So we want you to have fun. If you have any questions, we can try to answer those as best we can throughout the tour. And if we don't have an answer for you, we'll try to get an answer for you when we get back uh, after the tour is complete. Okay? Or we'll make fun up, Jen. Oh, hey, you do. All right, let's go. Here, what's coming off this way? We're off. Aha. Here's a place we get our picture at the end of the tour, I hope. Would you like me to take your picture with your thing? Well, I'm, we're live. Oh. We are live. No, no. You get... This facility opened up in the uh, summer of 2020, uh, kind of right during the pandemic. Originally from Lakewood, New Jersey. Uh, they had manufacturing in Lakewood, New Jersey, and, but they had design offices here in uh, Bensonville. So what happened is when we when we built this factory or we populated this factory, we were able to bring design and manufacturing all under one roof, which made a lot more sense. Logistically, it's great. We're central, kind of in Chicago area. Uh, this is kind of the home of, home of coin op, pinball machines, video games, slot machines. All this kind of comes out of the area, and it's great to be central in the United States. You're right in the middle of everything. Look, cases of shock watches. Yep. Look at that. Those are expensive. Cases of shock watches. Yep. Three bucks each. The wall of microwaves. The wall, yeah, the wall of microwaves. Uh, how many of you, anybody from out of the country today? Awesome. Perfect. Welcome. How many people own pinball machines? Do you have one in your home? Well, gosh, okay. everybody. <laughs> and then how many have been on a pinball tour before at the factory? Okay. Hey, Frank. How are you, man? Let's just, we'll start moving down this way and kind of get it going. We ship pinball machines out of the factory every single day. We ship domestically, and we also ship internationally. So for those of you who live out of the country, hopefully you've seen our games, uh, if you don't own them, in your homes. On today's tour, we are building Toy Story 4, the limited edition and the collector edition. Uh, with two lines, we have the ability to make two different tiers of games, or we can make two completely different games if we wanted to. We can switch the lines relatively quickly. We want to throw something else on a line and take something off. So the idea behind the tour today is to kind of take you through start to finish on how a pinball machine is made and how it gets into a box and then it ships out. Attacking the uh, factory tour from the yes. way back. Yes, a lot of yeah, a lot, a lot of tours. You can watch them on the channel. Data East, Alvin G and Company. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. Tour is a go go. Cabinets. Before artwork. Hot cam board. Ramps. Uh, we've not had to stop manufacturing. We've never had to shut down the line because it's a point issue. 
So we've never had a situation where we weren't doing anything from a summer standpoint. But yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, so when parts come into quality control, they pass forward into our stock room, which is back here. Customer service, our customer service is at the end. We'll show you that. We actually have another outbuilding where we keep a lot Thanks of Thanks for all your comments. I can't the type responses because building. I'm holding the camera. It's called a pimp. Whenever we're going to put a game on the line, we're able to pull parts. Say we want to make a group of 500 games real quick. We can go ahead and pull those parts out of inventory, populate them on the line so that we can just get that line going. We get towards the end of the 500, we want to throw 1,000 on that line, we pick another 1,000 parts. So everything comes out of inventory. If you look over here, we've got racks of Toy Story 4 play fields. We're going to show you how we populate these play fields throughout the assembly process. With Toy Story 4, there are two models. There's a limited edition model and a collector's edition model. The collector's edition play fields have a glitter effect that's underneath the, uh, it's in the printing process underneath the clear coat. So you'll see glitter along the key strokes or the key lines, some of the stars. It's just something that's a little bit added aesthetically for collector edition games. Uh, there's also other differences between the two, but play field wise on this particular release, that's, that's the main difference. <laughs> Where are the play fields actually uh, So our play fields are made in Germany by a company called Mirko, and then they get shipped here. Uh, and then we go through play fields, go through quality control too. So in case there is anything that we're not able to use, that gets pulled aside and get those replaced. So now this way. We got both lines going. That's a really good question. Let me pass you over. Hi, Joe. Hi, Pat. How are you, buddy? I'm awesome. Good. So, we'll now we basically have a question up top that said, what can we, we manufacture in capacity? On a bottom side, complete tag. Fasteners. We're running at capacity, and we're really cranking. This place is set up for it to run almost 100 games a day. 100 games a day. I don't know if you heard that. There's a lot of variables that come into place. We can certainly make wide bodies again. Absolutely. We, I, mean, I, I mean, to be very honest with Pirates, because it's such a highly anticipated or, or sought after title, the decision to make Pirates or not make Pirates has not been made, but we haven't ruled it out. We're set up where we could rerun Pirates if we wanted. It's just, it's just not a decision that's been made. I don't know about pricing. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows I think, what pricing? I think you sell a lot of them. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. So these rotisseries. These rotisseries could hold a wide body. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think they just need these. Yeah. So we can do rope wide bodies. So if you've heard that Jersey Jack will never make a wide body again because the factory is not yeah. set up to do that, uh, it sounds interesting, but it's just not accurate. Yeah. We could. We could do it. A lot of that's going to come back down to the designer. Does the designer want to do a wide body? Um, and again, some of our older titers are wide bodies. Wizard of Oz is a wide body. Pirates is a wide body. So. How about me as a wide body? No, you're, you're not a wide body. You're a standard body. That's good. We've got the most good Y'all have to renew that contract, I'm assuming, with Pirates. Yeah, I'm not sure with the licensing. I'm sure there would be something. 
I mean, we've been working with Disney also. I mean, Disney, we just did Toy Story right, right, 4. Right, yeah. yeah, so we've got a really good relationship with Disney, a great relationship with Warner Brothers. Um, so as far as if we wanted to get another title on the line, I don't know that it would be an impossible thing to do. But certainly not the first time we've been asked. It's a good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. No, uh, only the stern is virtual. That's tomorrow. What we try to do I can see comments. I just can't type. One station. You're only working on one side of the play field. Thanks you for all watching, guys, and commenting. This is uh, where customer service. Uh, Martha's back there. Let's say hello to Martha. Hi, Martha. Hey, Martha. She goes. She will go ahead and she will pick and pull all your parts orders, get them shipped out to you in a timely basis. There she is. She's uh, one of the most efficient people that I've ever worked with, so we're lucky to have her at Jersey Jack Pinball. The running joke is she's in a cage for your protection, <laughs> and now for hers. So we have that set up. When we look over to the right. Good, Jay. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, look. Look what we have here. For those of you on Guns N' Roses, we introduced a new lighting system. No, strategically placed. We have to get excited over the next title. We're going to give them just some space so that we're not going to stop rails. But if you turn around, these are the television screen covers for the. Uh, Line one, which is on the left. So for the purpose of the tour, we pretty much shut down line one so that you guys can walk the assembly line instead of having to try to maneuver in between employees. But we have the line that's running on line two so that you can turn and look and you can see, hey, that's what they're doing at this station that would also be on line one. Y'all aren't doing GNR. We're not doing GNR right now. There are some GNRs that are ready, readily available though, so if you have somebody that's looking to buy one. Uh, we always recommend contacting a distributor so you can order one up. Uh, Mike at Automated Services. <laughs> and if you don't have a distributor, you know, you can always order one. <laughs> or me. I, I'm selling Mike's games. All right, so on the assembly line, we have storyboards that are set up at each station. When you come in, each storyboard cutting out the highlights hole. what step of the assembly process should be taking place. So you can kind of see what's being populated before... This gets sent down to the next station. Shout out. Line, you'll notice mostly we're Jim. populating the underside of the play field. Say hi, Jim. Everything hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Funny word. So that when we're assembling at the back end, as we make our way down, it's an easy flip to go top side. Unless I'm using my cell phone. This middle section here that defines Thank you, the Tony. two lines is Thank you, sir. It's our sub-assembly area. So the more complicated mechs that require more than one part, that require some assembly, that's done here in the middle. And when those parts are done, they're then passed to the outskirts of the line so that somebody that's working a station can run and grab their Gabby Gabby mech and they can put it on the line. But before that's done, it's done in sub-assembly. Is there any male workers? Well, uh, we're not sure. They, that was obviously placed there so we could see it. But, but Godfather's next, we're pretty sure. But who knows? It's a good question. You're welcome, Paul. We have power tools that are hanging from a lot of these testing stations. These are all set to proper torque so that when something's getting screwed into a play field, it's not over torqued or it's not loose when it goes in. So there's a lot of thought that goes into making sure that these are powered properly. Side, well, I have to be on. I have to be on some side. I have to get past and in and out. That's the only way to do it. Look how nice everything looks when it's brand new. It's sparkling and clean, so you can see the holes are pre-drilled. See, 
they have the little notches so they know exactly uh, where the sockets and screws will go for the lamps. Nothing that clean. I can see if I can find somebody for I was just purchasing. curious. Yeah, I'm not really sure to be completely honest, but I could try to find the answer for you for sure. Again, just another example where you can see where board work is going to be done here. You can see where it's replicated on the bottom side of the play field. As we make our way further down, you'll notice these plastic hoods. This is where soldering would take place on the line, so this kind of gets rid of all that overflow so that you're not breathing that in. So these would be where the soldering stations would be, where these plastic hoods are. Sorry, I'm shouting at you. It's a weird, it's I'm a in the way. Oh, look. So I can plug in the motor and test. Solder exhaust. More stuff on the play field. Now remember, we have other Jersey Jack tours when they were making Wizard of Oz and Hobbits up on the internet. So make sure you look for our other videos back when they were in New Jersey. They don't know about our old titles until they see them and them. That's why I think Pinball Expo is also so important for people that are working in pinball that maybe have not been in the industry for a long time to just go see the You know, how pinballs evolved is that a humongous deal. Yeah, it's really advanced for sure. For sure. I like lead-free solder. There's nothing wrong with lead-free solder. There's a good way to keep everything sorted. So the stuff's not all over the place. Hello. I'm going to switch arms, switch hands. Ah, the decal assembly for the bow ties underneath the play fields. I also want to show you Playfield Test 1. It's the first chance that we're testing these fully populated playfields. So we'll come down through here. We passed this earlier. Now we're going to go into another area. Obviously, if you're following along, a Beavis and Butthead. A craft work. Interesting. So but probably not, not here, but come from our who knows? They come in like this. They come in empty. They come in bare. What we need to do when they come onto the line is we decal them, but we also have to populate them. So all of your wiring, your electronics, everything gets done in a little cabinet assembly line fashion. Just like you're used to seeing on the playfield line, every step of the cabinet line, we're adding more and more parts. Now eventually, this cabinet is going to meet up with the play field in a head, and it's called Grand Central. That's where everything starts becoming a pinball machine. We're going to show you that in a second, but first I wanted to go ahead and show you play field test one. This is a chance where we get to kind of look at a play field to make sure that it's doing everything that it's intended to do before it goes further down the line. See, there's still nice empty space too. And see, the, the concrete even shines. 
if anybody's taking pictures, like this is a pretty cool, in my opinion, I, I like taking pictures of this. It's not something that you see every day. So we've got that fully populated assembled plate field that's on this test station. And we can go in and we can go through our menu system like you would see at home. And then we can go back in and we can start check, testing every single switch, making sure everything's working as it's supposed to work. Now, if we run into an issue, this is a great place to find it on this rotisserie because then it's easy for us to address. The issue being, if we drop this into a cabinet and there's something that needs to be changed at that point, maybe it's in an awkward spot, instead of trying to reach it from a bad angle or trying to pull the play field out, we can address all of that right here. Do, do, is this rotisserie used for every single play field? Yeah, to my knowledge. Is there yeah. just one rotisserie though? One well, test? The, the, this is... The play fields are all on individual rotisseries, right. so that rotisserie will come off and right. come out to test. So once the play field's kind of made into its rotisserie, it'll ride that rotisserie all the way through the So top. this is the final check? This is the first play field check before it's going to go into a cabinet. Ah. There's additional testing that I'll show you when we make our way down the other way, the other side. Ken, did you say where the cabinets are made? Are they made somewhere and then shipped here? Or? Yeah, so the cabinet, we have this a manufacturing company that makes the cabinets, they come fantastic. in blank and then we have to decal them and then we would put all the parts and all the electronics in the cabinets. And I'm sorry if you didn't hear that, it's, it was harder for me to shout. But there's a mini, like, there's kind of a mini assembly line where the cabinets will go down and they'll add a shaker motor, they'll add the wiring harness, they'll add the flipper mechs, they'll add the shooter rod. That all goes through here. And what you're gonna notice when we turn around the bend here is like, hey, that looks like a finished cabinet, which should be correct. This looks like a finished play field. So let's get the play field and move it down the conveyor and let's start meet, mating those with the back box and then we kind of have a pinball machine. Okay, so we'll come up with this one. So each machine stays on this rotisserie. Each play field stays on the rotisserie. So it gets hooked up. Well, I'd rather have rotisserie chicken. Yes, that's true. The red is collected. You, you can notice that from the uh, from the trip. So these are collector's editions. Do you see the so sparkle? Any that come through here that don't have to be addressed. If there's something that needs to be fixed, we can pull these back out to a hospital line. So this is some of these. See, Gabby Mech installed two forward, rubbing on playfield. Okay, and that's the Gabby Mech right there. We can't see. This one looks good. This one says left diverter flap not tightened, fixed. So this is uh, this is Grand Central, guys. This is where the playfield again we were just talking about this yeah, yeah. meets the cabinet and meets the back box. Now we've got what you're used to seeing in a pinball machine. Legs and everything get packed in a box. We'll show you that on the other side. But now they're going ahead. They're hooking everything up and they're testing again to make sure that everything is working as intended. So that's like a second. There's another pass. Gabby. The See, they right. fix it. They fix it quick. So, and this te this is the first test. Remember, then Ken says it goes through more tests once it's in the cabinet. So they do the initial test while it's outside, making it easier to work on. Now, Wallace is retired, folks. He has retired. Now, look, cabinet art installed. See, they're making their way. Oh, we have 91 watching. Stalking. <laughs> 91 people stalking. Well, they're from all over the world. No. No. We might come back. We, we just find that with the standard editions, especially with Guns N' Roses, a lot of people preferred the limited and the collector. Yeah. So the demand wasn't there as much for the standard. So for this release, you know, it just made sense where we were going to go limited collectors. Somebody wants to know if you use the rotisseries, what we just saw, mm -hmm. for the company barbecues. Yeah, right. That is an interesting <laughs> thing, but yeah, I don't, I'll let you know when we have a company barbecue, if we use those rotisseries. <laughs> Uh, in this area right here, and a little interesting, kind of a fun fact, Jersey Jack Pinball, we're known for building pinball machines, but we also build a PC that goes in the back box of every single one of our games. Oh, Can I get in here for yeah, a second? Yeah, yeah. Well, you build them here, huh? 
So everything comes in in parts, and we're able to populate a full PC that goes on this back plate. And then this whole plate gets installed in the head. And then we would it's install our industry-leading 27-inch LCD <laughs> TV. Color TV. Color TV. Good promo. Exactly. So do those have a yeah, I could let you, I could find out what exactly the specs are because I had somebody that also asked about what process hey, they were using. Hey, hey, Lenny. Yeah. But yeah, so a little fun fact. We were building PCs and the motion. So does that come? Hold on a second. I'm sorry. Sure. Sure. Do you program in Linux? I believe that we do, but Joe Katz, who's in the tour in front of us, he can talk to you more about software. Okay. Is that just like that? They don't put all that, don't all that together here. We do. Okay. So this plate's bare. We put all the parts. You'll see boxes for okay. motherboards and fans and everything. So now we're, this is our kind of our head assembly. As we come forward this way. Maybe this will be your limited edition. See the serial number? Maybe that'll be your LE. Toy Story. This is the shop where we can fabricate just about anything that goes into a pinball machine. Designers will come in here, they'll make their parts. We cut white woods. <clears throat> Excuse me, a white wood is something, is a play field that it's kind of a first run that might have inserts but doesn't have artwork. You're testing on these white woods, you're making changes before you would go into production. All that's done here. Parts, once they're kind of created here, we're able to then sub them out so that we can get you know, mass quantities of these parts made. But all the design, we can pretty much from start <clears throat> to finish make everything for a pinball machine in this particular cage area. We'll come on through this way. Empty. Empty. Oh, look. We got a lone GNR here. Yeah, that one came in. That might have been a marketing sample game. That's going to go out maybe to IAPA. Hey, look, this way, I've got some new laser. Uh, Rob is in there making some magic. Not quite sure what he's doing, but we, you can come through a quarter inch to steal with that laser. Um, it's an amazing piece of machinery for cutting rails, ball guides, anything that you might want to do. Behind me, we have a lot of uh, testing where we do cycle testing. A lot of pieces that are going to be run like to multiple uh, repetitions, we want to make sure that they're going to last longer than a few uh, cycles of repetition. So we can test anything from you know, 100,000 cycles up to a million cycles before you know we make sure that we're not getting the ones that have a failure. Now, I mean, the designers and the engineers kind of know what they want for it. Brian, there's some stuff. What, what corporation would have nudie you know, stuff? <laughs> we can't look on that side. We're not going to tempt our invitation to come back. Sorry, no, no temptations here. All right, Isn't now it we nice have final test. So the game is assembled. Julian is here as one of our final testers. They go through gameplay testing. Again, we've got a full checklist to make sure that every single thing is performing as intended. Things can happen in shipping. It's pinball. Things get moved around. But to the best of our ability, everything is working as intended before it leaves the factory. Nice, nice orderly toolbox. Yes. We got a hundred watching from all over Welcome the world. Jersey Jack Pinball. I yeah. didn't even know you were doing it live. Holland, yeah, we have Holland, Holland. We have Ireland and England. And well, I apologize. Canada. My voice is a little raspy. No, you're doing great. Today, so. Everybody, lo everybody loves this. Great. They love I'm glad it. you brought the uh, your your audience in. It. It's fun. Yeah.
How many are they making a day, somebody asked? You said so earlier. Yeah, if the factory is, it's set up to run at capacity with a couple lines. I mean, we could do almost upwards to 100 games a day. Oh. But as far as daily production, it varies on a lot of different aspects. You know, what's parts. going on with parts okay. and, you know, what's on the line and what's getting switched on and off. So it's, it's difficult to give you, like, uh, an estimate. But, you know, that's kind of where we're at with, uh, with how that goes. And everybody's excited about the Pee Wee that, that you left out in the open. What the, the Pee Wee Herman that you left out oh, of the box. I don't know anything about it. Oh, come on. You left that out there on purpose. We're, we're, we're agreeable. You have to do that. Ah. Now, at this point, the game is getting a back glass. It's going to get the play field glass. It's going to get a lockdown bar. The head is going to be folded down. It's going to be strapped, as you can see, kind of on the line here. And then that's where those games are going out to box. And then where we started was the kind of the shipping area where games are already in boxes and they're going out. It's nice that you're including these on all the uh, collector's editions, the sure. protectors. Anytime we have any side art, we want to make sure we have protectors. It's Anything really that nice. we have for aftermarket, for instance, Guns N' Roses, uh, Toy Story 4 has aftermarket blades that will be coming soon. We always sell with the protectors uh, just so that you don't have any scuffs. Those decals also have a layer of protection on them, like an over laminate that's textured. It's just extra line just so you don't yeah. mess up your decals. It's a great idea. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. But guys, I want to say this. This kind of concludes my section of the tour. Uh, it was an honor to have everybody in. It really means a lot that you were all able to come in, take time out of your expo to come take a tour of Jersey Jack. First time we've ever really done anything like this. So again, thank you. Thank you very much. If you get a chance at expo, come visit us at the booth. We've got a lot he of can't stuff tell going us on. About and if you have any other questions that I didn't answer today, let me know and I can try to find those answers for you. But I just want to say thank you very much for coming in. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you, guys. We all loved it. And you fun. had an extra hundred people here. Perfect. Thanks for coming That's out, guys. Good. <laughs> so feel free to kind of hang out. I think Jersey Jack is back there. John Dowson. Uh, you can take some there. pictures. Uh, Jersey Jen's here. Who else is here? I saw The bus is probably going to be here in like Why not? Why not? A lot of fans, eh? A lot of fans. And look, there's some games to play. Of course, there's a line. There's always going to be a line. Now, they say Jack is floating around here. There he is. He's over by the picture taking section. I think. Everybody's waiting for a picture. Well, did you learn anything? It's very fascinating. It is. It really is. It's really nice. So I'm really happy. Well, of course I'm in the lunchroom, Lenny. We always end here, and I have a banker microwave. Obviously, everybody can eat here if they want. They can get coffee. I see two coffee pots over there. A uh, a, 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 a Clegg. Coffee. Clegg. Clegg. Keurig. Keurig. Clegg. Keurig. Water dispenser. A water dispenser. Oh, well, that was very nice. Fun. We had a good time, didn't we? Huge fun. And did you learn anything? I learned everything. Ken is good to us. And we're the last tour of the day. We were hoping to see a secret. Oh. There's always secrets. There's secrets in every pinball company. Of course there is. You just have to know where to look. Ah. Well. That's how it goes. And we did, didn't we? We looked. Thanks for watching, everybody. And we'll have more regular footage later. Thank you, Todd. See you later, Ken. Thanks, guys.